Well, it's really quiet in this neighborhood on a Thursday night, isn't it? And, um, a little bit of an epiphany there as far as, um, I was looking, when I went to the mailbox today, and I looked back at the house, and it was all really nice cars in front of my parking lot, except for uh, the piece of crap that uh, refuses to leave. I don't know why. I insist upon putting that in my face every day, but okay. Um, and uh, as I'm walking here, I realize I was always like that, right? Um, one of the jokes was uh, one of the first guys I saw set up in a BMW. <laughs> uh, to which my neighbor advised me. Um, oh no, excuse me, that was the 12 year sergeant. Or, hey, hey, he wasn't really in the military because the military doesn't wear that color of uh, fatigues anymore or something. Uh, it was quite humorous. Um, anyway, and so it uh, epiphany to me that the quality of my home and uh, the people and vehicles and so far uh, really accompanied the police department handing me off to my neighbor and uh, this guy thinking <laughs> he had dibs on me and um, <laughs> to the point where he literally just pretended like we had a relationship. Uh, when that didn't work, he drugged me. <laughs> and uh, then when that didn't work, he started to hurt me. Um, and I am, once again, speechlessly um, be bewildered as far as uh, point blank when me and my friends and my brother... Uh, Whoever did anything together, we played 10,000, we played rummy, my brother bitched at me for cleaning my house, to the point where, yeah, I'm now the new standard of tweak or clean, which I think is an oxymoron in and of itself, but I don't know, maybe you should look the fuck around. That's why, <laughs> if somebody was going to come and take all of that stuff to the dump once, uh, they had a dumpster to put it in, and uh, the day that he came there, uh, didn't want to move their car, and he left. And he came back once without his truck, uh, asked if I was single, and I said, tell him not only am I single, but I'm straight, and I haven't heard from him since, so, um, I don't know what kind of fucking game people are playing with me, but I'm sick and fucking tired of it, uh, they don't have a right to drug me, I'm not theirs, I told him no from the beginning, I told him unless he could be friends with me, like he was friends with Colton, and as far as I know, well, maybe not, I'm sure, um, probably at some point, he did drug Colton, uh, because he palmed the olive skin, right? And that disgusts me, absolutely disgusts me. Um, Kenny too, right? Uh, Kenny, he got to take a nice punishment for the fact that I said yes to him. <laughs> oh my god, this is the person who then turned around and told my ex he could be king again because uh, when I started realizing the little things like due to just like pretending like we're boyfriend and girlfriend and I really need to send him a message uh, to be with another guy that's when Kenny came in um, and when I took him to my room we were just going in there to hang out hi um, he literally went in there and tried to physically throw him out of my room. Uh, you get out of here to the point where I was like, excuse me? You have no right to tell anybody to get out of my room. Um, it's become a nightmare since then. I don't even know what he tells the police anymore. I don't even know what matters. And um, I don't understand why he has warrants, but he gets pulled over and doesn't go to jail. <laughs> the only thing I know, not only gets pulled over does, with the warrant, doesn't go to jail, but actually tells the cop basically he'll kick his fucking ass if he pulls him over again. Um, I am 
we really are astounded, especially since I really believe the guy started neglecting his own father because he wouldn't leave my freaking side. And I had many times offered, so my dad was my, one of my best friends um, for all, my most of my lifetime. I and, and his dad is a Vietnam veteran. I would like bring him here, you know. I'm making uh, cupcakes and coffee cake and uh, good coffee and um, music. I did get Netflix and he would have contributed financially. He was so jealous of his own father that he abandoned him basically instead of just including him. And that alone, that alone said, I will never date you, ever. But he went around whining about his weight. Had nothing to fucking do with his weight. If you have a problem with your weight, get off your fucking fat ass. That's what I did. Uh, so once again, not impressing me, dude. I didn't want his hands touching me. I didn't want his lips on me. I didn't want his parts on me. I didn't want to see them. I didn't want to feel them. I didn't want to know them. Unfortunately, they left me in the position where he was the only freaking person who would help me ever because he knew the truth. He was part of the spin doctoring team. So he knew I was really an innocent freaking victim. He knew me and Eric. <laughs> he knew that all I ever fucking did was walk my kids up to the bus stop and back. I never had any guys at my house. I was never cheating. And uh, that my kids were happy and loved their freaking mother. He knew it. He freaking knew it. He just thought my kids didn't like him. And because of that, I wouldn't date him. Even though I told him I never would date him anyway. And the irony is if he'd helped me get my kids back i might have freaking liked him so might have they you ever think that maybe they let us too and saved them from their psycho father and my fucking psycho sister <laughs> instead he killed his cat and blamed it on me <laughs> he ripped out my internet cords and blamed it on me and this is how far lazy and low society has gotten that the even century link was concerned enough about my reaction to getting the internet back on. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> that was a weird thing, perhaps. Anyway, um, I'll come back to that, I suppose. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I perhaps because I lost... Oh, that killed the cat. Blaming it on me. That uh, Century Link, when they returned... At that point, Lisa had it, so she controlled the hotspot, and um, she would just kick us off whenever, not only we made her mad, but if one of the other people made her mad, she would kick us off as well. And unfortunately, I feel horrible for Colton, because I had paid for a month of my own servants, and um, so I didn't realize how often he was getting kicked off the internet because of me pissing her off. Kenny, of course, he had his grandparents' Xfinity password, and she wouldn't let her Kenny Michael Roberts go without drinks or internet. Uh, as there, I think there might have been a few times, though, because I give him, there was still some part of him that didn't want to be that person. Um, so, but that's how unbelievably lazy. And it's one of the reason why I'm horrified for how many people are living these basic prisoners and slaves screaming for help only to be told, oh, they're off their meds, they're bipolar, they're schizo. Um, well, they, they didn't even have to say that, right? All I had to do was say I was a fucking slut. And that's the one I said, look at my little girl, and I think, oh my god. Because that's pretty much what it was, wasn't it? <laughs> you don't care if your mom's doing this. Well, come here. Come here. And it happens every fucking day, and people fucking know it. How he got my family to turn their back on me without so much as a phone call is beyond me. And um, I actually owe my sister Debbie uh, some kudos and an apology but the fact that she broke the code of silence and actually called me. <laughs> uh, but by then, 
I was so traumatized. She offered to talk to me on Skype. But it's like now, right? It's a Blair Witch Project. It's so difficult to talk about this. But I want to fall to the ground. It's such an immense nightmare. It's such an immense nightmare. And I wonder, this is all in response, supposedly these school shootings and shit. But I'm like, this is why they happen. People who are good citizens, who besides being depressed or whatever, have done nothing wrong. And suddenly they're not being people anymore. There's no rights. People, people are going to take my home because I don't own it, because I own a, owe a mortgage. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> or they're trying to take my home just by saying I'm crazy. When I'm like, since when can you do that? Since when does that have any fucking bearing whatsoever about whose fucking property it is? <laughs> Which is another message from my brother. There's a reason that my dad put me number one in his living trust because he trusted me because I freaking earned it because he knew there was no more honest motherfucking person than me and I can't believe my brother accused me of driving right don't drive she doesn't drive driving from South Hill Puyallup <laughs> living then um I don't even know where I was living now here in Spanaway driving to Spanaway to university place while he was at the grocery store and stealing my dad's Percocets to the point where my dad had a, a big a bag of pharmaceuticals and I felt uncomfortable even looking through them to keep pain medicines or uh, antibiotics because I felt like a fucking criminal in my father's room. My brother looked at me and said, why are you even here? And uh, I get, I'm sorry that um, I, 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 <laughs> I thought because he wasn't working, he didn't have kids and my dad adored him. That it was a good situation. I didn't realize how incompetent he was. <laughs> However, it had only been a month. And I fully intended when he was out of the uh, care home to be there two to three days a week to alleviate my brother. Because I understand caring for Grandma Ivy, how unbelievably important it is to have rest when you're caring for a sick elderly person. This is stuff. <laughs> they, they condemned me. They took my babies and they, they basically gave my children to the one woman. He said, if you invite her to my dad's deathbed, I'll disown you. He's let put her hands on my babies for four years. And that's what I got. He said, I'm not coming over and visiting, but I really don't know if I want to see him. <laughs> And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I find myself hating my son all the time. My brother and my sister. <laughs> and they let him win. They fucking let him win. <laughs> they hurt them. They hurt them. I was there. <laughs> Uh, not only was I there, but nobody can deny up until the day he left. Actually, after he left, he was still trying to get back together with me. And now all of a sudden, I would be crazy and nothing and nobody for 18 freaking years. And nobody bats an eyelash. In fact, they figured the best line of attack is to go, la, 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 we can't hear you. <laughs> Which was one thing for family and friends. It's not another thing to have a police officer tell you he's college educated. But misses the fact that when you're talking about pissing your pants into beer and ketamine, and the side effects is bladder problems, he might have put two and two together instead of um, accusing me of doing a drug like I said I haven't even seen in 20 years. You know, people do meth. They, that's another thing. And this is why people end up alcoholics and drug addicts. 
because they've been screaming for help since they were children. And instead, you lock them back in that motherfucking basement. And they wonder, they blame them for having issues. <laughs> call them fakers, call them liars. That's a fucking injury to goddamn insult. <laughs> so I get that. So I'm the one who's getting injured upon insult. They would be insulted upon injury. <laughs> well, you know, we really can't afford to um, appoint people to look after our children, but we can spend 25, 30 times that to give police departments unnecessary SWAT teams uh, to, to survey a woman who's just a mother, who's social, who lets people be who they freaking are. Um, but you know what, when they cross the line, as people are often do when you give them some rope. I kick them to the motherfucking curb. That's it, you're done. You cross the line, you're out of here. And that's the only reason I have been able to maintain a, a progressively better environment despite having an army sent after me. Right, which reminds me, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, he told Eric he could be king again. Cause I told him uh, if I wanted to deal with that kind of crap, uh, I would just go back to my husband, the man I fell in love with when I was 16 years old, the man who's holding my two children hostage from me. If I would deal with that much laziness, uh, um, rudeness and just plain stupidity, I would go back to the man who I fell in love with as a teenager. So he went to him and colluded. And people, because the best part of it is all they have to do is stay paranoid, delusional. But you know what? If you really look at it, who has behaved like a paranoid, delusional person? Not me, who's lived my life in the open, whether it be controversial or not. I fucking put it out there. He is behind closed doors. I don't even know where he is. I don't even have pictures of the coffee cups of, that we went to the fair every year. Because, I don't know, maybe that would signify that maybe I knew how to appropriately interact with my children. And, uh, you know... I, I haven't even been to the fair four years, whatever, since they were gone that last year we went together. I am, I don't even care about the money, the heart to go to the fair. And they made damn sure I didn't have a boyfriend to go with because I knew that was one of my Eric's cutie pie moments. Uh, we went to the fair earlier in our relationship. So I'd have been 22 and he's Mr maturity and we went to a haunted house um and <laughs> it, it, it was supposed to be a haunted house it looked like a wax museum uh, a celebrity in the wax museum and at the very freaking end freddy krueger or uh jason chainsaw guy comes up behind us and um it was realistic enough it, his big joke was that i tried to climb in his pocket um, because I screamed and grabbed onto him because he made me feel safe. Because I always saw him, but he was somebody who was strong and competent. And, um, a champion. Even if I thought he championed the wrong cause. Oh, but... <laughs> But one again, you didn't hurt me enough. I don't really hate myself for loving you enough. You're trying to make the next guy that I'm with hurt me in the same freaking way. Knowing how much it devastated me, he's trying to get that person to treat me the same way. Except it's not the same, it's been worse. And he knows that too, because... The um, last thing that he wants is just laying in bed together all night and um, 
Yeah, not me casting spells on them or whatever the frick they tell them, like their toes or something. I have no clue. I guess they tell them whatever the fuck they want to hear, pretty much. Um, whatever finally gets them to go, oh no, no, I'll have to go. And uh, how do I defend against that? Especially when uh, I try to throw people out of my house who haven't paid me a fucking dime. Uh, and the police department says, I have to have let them have guests. Not have to let them have guests. I have to provide them food and toilet paper and maid services or else I have to leave my own home. Um, but yet, I can't do it. I can't turn away people who have nowhere to fucking go on a cold night but no goddamn money. You know what? Maybe they have a cigarette or some tobacco or just a good fucking story or a good song. I don't know. I'm a good person. That's the reality. So, um... That's why he once told me, a truly good can't fight. And um, I feel that um, I'm just glad I always let my mind go to the dark side as much as it wanted because I didn't think there was any risk or harm um, in uh, letting my mind, my imagination play and run wild. Um, even if it was uh, in, bought in an hashtag, but like a safe place to let my hate and... Um, that kind of thing uh, dissipate uh, um, yeah. see the bringing darkness from above the uh, there's where you get the truly good trying to fight evil and the best they can do is um, bring themselves to a lower level by attacking uh, personal features that people are born with and a really ridiculous uh, aspect of a person to attack. Um, love it changes people's appearance to the person who loves them. And that's the other reason when people are like, God, how's he with that fucking like ugly bitch? Well, you know what? To him, she's not ugly. I had to accept that about my freaking sister, Angelin, because uh, to me, she'd always look like a nasty skank. And I never understood how any guy would fucking put his hands on her. Uh, so it wasn't until I saw a picture of him and her at his mom's, and she took off her glasses, did the sexy librarian thing, and I thought, okay, I can see now why a guy went, oh, hey. But, um, no, pretty much up until then, I don't know, Texaco, there's no Texaco around here, is there? I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. I love the freaking walk, and, uh, I just need to get the heck away from huge amount of distress that makes no damn sense. I love you guys. That too. Uh, my granddaughter just talked to the moon, and I think they made her feel bad for that. And I'm just, you monsters, you horrible monsters. She wanted to come back and see her grandma again. They wouldn't let her. But he let his pedophile father live with them. The point, yeah, that's what opened up my mind again. Was, uh, Lilith's world and the world ended up being code for vagina. Um, Lilith's world, and I'm about to fall. <laughs> and uh, you just try, do you know me at all, Anthony? I like that, that videotape, and uh, you know it's it's really hard because I tell people all the time I always thought you'd move back in and that we'd get a chance to get to know each other. Unfortunately, Eric London and Eric Christensen knew that, so um, I can see how the goal has been keep you away from me. And you can see on that tape, I loved you. I adored you. 
and I was a teenager. Colton, too, he won't seem to give me the credit of I was 16 years old with two kids. Uh, I don't know if he really understands how unbelievably hard that was. Oh, and as far as me leaving my children, um, that was another thing. When uh, me and the boy's dad split up, I we were like splitting custody, and um, uh, he um, called me after two days and said, "Come get the kids. I can't handle it." Uh, so I went and got the kids, and uh, at sixteen, became their sole caretaker. And uh, it was hard, but you know, that's one thing is very clear is the love uh, that was not denied my children, and not only that, but Anthony delighted. Um, and that was when the, the older boys didn't realize how individualistic, individual each of your children are. Uh, so, um, Colton is like thrown at me a couple times throughout this process of, um,